Hello world, it's me again. Welcome to the fastest 30 minutes on television. This is the Ken Simmons Show and for Area 58 Community Access Media, I am Ken Simmons. Looking through the papers again, and you know, there's not a lot of good news. There's not any good news. I, Reverend Billy Graham passed away. A great man, a great preacher. I don't care what religion you are. You've got to respect the guy for what he did. He was a counsel for what, 12 presidents. Imagine that, 12 presidents. That's absolutely incredible. They all loved him. My wife adored the man. And so it really isn't a sad thing. He was 99 years old. He lived a great productive life. Uh, he was a firm believer in what he did. He was totally committed. And uh, you, you just felt that. I wish I could be that committed. Then you wouldn't be afraid of anything because you know that Jesus is on your side. He certainly knew that. And he certainly preached that. And that's the way it is. Uh, the bad news is that thing in Florida, the kids that were killed and the teachers that were killed, uh, that still bothers me. Uh, there was a town hall meeting last night with the students and uh, Marco Rubio was there and a couple of other politicians and these kids really landed on, so did the parents. Uh, they, they, you, know, you know, I'm wondering what the devil is going on with our Congress. All these people, there's been, hundreds of kids killed, needlessly. You know, in the prime of their life, these beautiful, beautiful kids that haven't even started to live, they're just about to enter adulthood and start careers and start college and start a job and maybe start a family. And yeah, yeah, They're robbed of all that because of some crazy that's able to get a gun. Like they said last night, a guy 18 years old can't buy a beer legally, but he can go out and buy a machine gun. Does it make any sense? What are they going to do? So I'm disappointed in Trump's attitude. He doesn't seem to really care. Uh, and that's only my opinion. Now you you could if you were here you'd argue with that. Some of you I know you would, but I'm just concerned about it. And you know who can do something about it for sure? Us. Us. We can do something about it. The people can do something about it. I'm going to leave it there. I've got a, a, a guest that I'm going to introduce to you in just a few minutes. And I'm excited about it. He's, I've met him. I, he's not a friend, but I met him one time a couple of years ago. I was very impressed. That's why I asked him on my show. And I think you're going to be very impressed, too. This guy's got a lot to say. And he's got the means to back up what he says. So don't go away. I'm going to come right back and introduce you to a great guest. Talk to you later. Okay, we're back and happy to be because without you, there's no need for me. I told you I had a guest. I told you I had an interesting guest, but you're not surprised at that. All my guests are interesting. But this guy is something else. If you're, if you're a veteran or spouse of a veteran or a family of a veteran, kick off your shoes and pour yourself your favorite beverage because you've got to listen to this. This guy is important. I'm going to listen. I'm going to introduce you now to the secretary of the DVS, the Department of Veterans Services. I am so proud. I feel privileged to have him here. His name is Francisco Urena. Yes, Kenny. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice Pleasure. to see you again. Great to see you as well. And thanks for the invite. Oh, thanks for the acceptance. <laughs> we met, I don't know, a couple of years ago at the Brockton VA. Um, and it, they were putting in a walkway for veterans that are uh, very, very ill. And it was beautiful. There's a waterfall there. And I, it was just, just so gorgeous. And uh, he was there. And I interviewed him. Uh, I didn't know who he was at the time. But I interviewed him because he's so damn handsome. <laughs> and I wanted somebody on my show that looked better than me. That's not very difficult, by the way. I want to say a few words about the VA, if I may. Absolutely. Because, uh, 
The V, I, I hear a lot about the VA but in the rest of the country. Sure. Uh, this, this, this part of the country, and you can ask uh, almost any veteran, I get treated like a king. I go to the Brockton campus. Uh, uh, the Boston VA uh, health facility has West Roxbury, Jamaica Plain, uh, Brockton. We have a little place now down in Plymouth. I think there's a couple other places. Mm -hmm. He can tell you better than I can, but I have never been denied service. I've been treated like a king. Uh, I am a veteran of the Korean War. I didn't do a heck of a lot. I was there. I didn't do a heck of a lot. I don't deserve the treatment I get, but they give it to me anyway because I'm a veteran. And I really appreciate that. And I feel, I feel that a large part is due to your efforts. Now, you were at the VA, at the VA in Boston. You were headed Correct. up to Boston VA. I was. Could you tell us just a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so I started uh, in Lawrence primary to coming to Boston. I was the veteran service officer. In Massachusetts, we have a VSO in every city and town. And I represented the city, of Bo the city of Lawrence in 2007 when I came home from the Marines and served that community for four years. I then was invited to come to Boston as the commissioner of veteran services for the city of Boston under Mayor Menino and uh, tenure under Mayor Walsh. And then I transitioned to the state under the direction of Governor Baker uh, to be the Secretary of the Department of Veteran Services, which I'm proud to represent our 365,000 veterans who live in Massachusetts, their families, their caregivers. We also have two soldiers' homes in Massachusetts, one in Chelsea and one in Holyoke, as well as two state cemeteries, which are under our, our care in Agawam and in Winchenden. Now, you're not part of the VA. I'm not. I'm a state employee. Uh, so the VA is our partner. You know, this probably our role is to promote the benefits and services, both federally, state, and local benefits that our veterans deserve. Such as locally, we could talk about some tax exemptions for property owners who are service connected. The aspect of welcome home bonuses, that which are part of the state, and so many other, whether it's health care, whether it's education, whether it's home buying, um, and the list goes on. Veterans have earned those rights of benefits because of their service to our country, and we're so very proud to ensure that every veteran, every family who deserves a benefit receives it, and receives it in a timely fashion. Wow. That's so, that's so great. You know, uh, can we back up just a sure. little bit and let the people know your, a little bit about your background? Yeah, Do you absolutely. mind that? Absolutely. Right. So, okay, I, I came to Massachusetts at the age of four from the Dominican Republic. All right, now, can st I'm going to stop you there. All right. At the age of four from the Dominican Republic. Yes. Now, if you people don't know about the Dominican Republic, if you're a baseball fan, think David Ortiz. And it goes far beyond that. Was it? Was it Martinez? Ma Martinez? Martinez, yes. Is, who's a great, great yeah. pitcher. Sure. And these guys are not only great and talented, they're nice guys. They're just nice people from Dominican Republic. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Sure. I, I stopped you. So I came at the age of four. I lived in Lawrence and lived in that community for a, a number of years. Uh, then our family, uh, Lawrence was a tough time, a tough town then, and we moved down to Florida. Um, I had finished my high school in Florida, and the day after high school, I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. Wow, so Marine. Graduated wow. on a Sunday, Monday morning, I was on my way to boot camp. Served the, in the United States Marine Corps for eight years. Served as a tank crewman. Uh, uh, and s I volunteered for diplomatic security to serve at two American embassies in Syria and in Kyrgyzstan. And then I came back to California. Grew Wait a minute sure. now. Yes. Let's, stay, let's right. stay overseas for a minute. You got wounded. You're a Purple Heart recipient. I, did. I received the Purple Heart on my deployment to Iraq in 2005. I understand you still carry that piece of shrapnel. Yes, I you. have a, still a piece of metal on my face, a um, piece of fragment, but it uh, doesn't deter. Uh, but it, it kind of keeps a, a reminder of the experiences that I've had and the aspect of the many men uh, who I served with who, uh, at the age of 18, 19, 20, were real uh, carrying the mission uh, overseas and, and ensuring that we were successful. Uh, that's great. Yeah, that's just fantastic. Marines, I, I said to a, a Marine once, oh, you're an ex-Marine. He said, no, I'm yeah. not an ex-Marine. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Right. Semper Fi, Mac. Uh, <laughs> okay. You went to California? Went to California, retrained as a tank commander 
and deployed to Iraq for a deployment of six months. Wow. Yeah. Wow, you did a lot of service. You did. Indeed. You know, yeah. it's the, the needs of the Marine Corps. Uh, it was an aspect I'm uh, very proud of um, and many proud of, the again, the men that I served with in that tank crew, the women that I served in, in, in embassy duty, uh, but the many experiences that I had the opportunity to serve. Um, again, uh, like many veterans who have that sense of, of opportunity, that sense of duty to serve our country, to make our country better for the next generation, and I feel that's what we did. You certainly did. You certainly did. Now, uh, education? I came home, used the GI Bill for education, went through Northern Essex Community College while I was working as a veteran service officer in Lawrence, and then transferred to the University of Massachusetts in Lowell, where I graduated with a degree in history and political science. One more personal question. Sure. Married? I am. I have two young kids as well. How old? Yes. Uh, Madison is uh, six months. Excuse me. Madison is uh, two and a half and... and all right, let's go back. <laughs> okay. Madison is six months, and Maxwell is two and a half. Two and a half, the best time of your life. You know it that? Is, it is, indeed. I wish I could do that over again. I had two boys. Okay. And uh, one is 62 and one is 57 wow. now. But uh, I still love them. You yeah. never lose that. Yeah, no, You indeed. never lose Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, okay, I, I think there's nothing more personal I want yeah. to talk about. So let's talk about the DVS. The sure. DVS, by the way, Department of Veterans Services. And... Located in Boston on Washington Street, I sure. believe? Our main office is in Boston, but really the focus of the department is the work that we do locally. In every city and town, there is an office of veteran services. Every city and town every in the city Commonwealth. Every city and town in the Commonwealth. And some have created districts where they have an office and they have combined a city with multiple towns or multiple towns. But nonetheless, there is a local veteran service officer. It is required by law, Kenny. Uh, there is a law in the books part of chapter 115 that requires that every city and town with a population of over 12,000 people has a full-time veteran service officer. A full-time? A full-time. Um, and any community that has less than 12,000 people has a part-time part veteran service officer. And they're paid by the state? They are paid locally. They're municipal uh, partners. They are local employees of the cities or the towns. And our connection is our reimbursements of the uh, funds that they expend for financial assistance. Oh, wow, I didn't realize yes. that. I didn't so. realize that. Uh, we have a, a veterans officer here, the heck of a nice guy. Indeed. And he's going to follow you uh, in a couple of weeks. He's going to come on. So we here at Area 58, myself, uh, would do just about anything that we were capable of mm -hmm. doing for the veterans. We did about four shows with disabled veterans up sure. uh, in the Parkin campus. Okay. And uh, I don't know why we stopped. Let's resume that again, Rich. Yeah, all right. Okay, we, 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 we've pried into his private life. You know a little bit about him. You know that he's a heck of a nice guy. So we're gonna take a little break here, and when we come back, we're gonna talk heavily about the DVS. I have a couple of questions that a veterans group where I live in South Meadow Village here in Carver have given me, and they're mentally imprinted on my brain. I'm gonna ask him about that, so don't go away. Pour yourself your favorite beverage. Okay, we're back, and uh, I'm glad to be. Uh, I'm so excited about the, my guest. I've already introduced you, Secretary of the DVS. He's a member of uh, Governor Charlie Baker's cabinet. His name is uh, Francisco. Is it Urena or Urena? Yeah. Urena, yeah. Urena. There's an umglots over the end. There is. There is an atilde, it's called. And uh, in Spanish, it's pronounced Urena. But if I want my emails to get where they need to get, it's Urena. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You've been, how long you've been uh, Secretary of the DVS? I've been with Governor Baker's team here for two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. Enjoying it? I love it. Yeah. A tremendous um, support. Um, but we have the flexibility to implement policies, to implement best practices, to really serve the veterans, families, and caregivers in the very best way. And we're very proud of that, Kenny. Uh, the access, uh, the opportunities, we run a very front-facing uh, department where we are in the community. We are in programs such as yours. We are in, in places where sometimes the access um, and, and, and the sense of acknowledgement to 
to many groups, um, we ensure that we are there because it's, we owe it to the veterans to recognize their service, to recognize their sacrifice, but also if there's a group that's doing some great things to ensure that we are able to recognize them as well. When you say you, you owe it to the veterans, when it comes from you, it's, it's sincere. It has to be. A lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, some people say that and it, it's not really sincere, but from you it's sincere. And you've got such great credentials no, because that you were head of the Boston. Yes. You were head of uh, Lawrence. Yes. So your experience is invaluable at such a very young age. Hmm. I know how old you are. I'm not <laughs> going to say anything, but I, you're, you're quite young and you have a whole career ahead of you. Tell me if I may ask, what is the mission of the DVS, what, what's their mission? Or have you already stated that? Yeah, so the Department of Veteran Services, our focus is to provide the support to our local veteran service officers so that they could deliver the benefits and services to veterans and families. The number one program that we have is mandated by law and is unique to Massachusetts is Chapter 115. It's a financial assistance program for veterans and families who are under the federal poverty level. And the focus of that program is to identify homeless veterans and secondly, to give a better quality of life to our veterans and families in that program. It is a program that it is located and it is administered locally through cities and towns, places like Carver and many other communities who are watching this program today. And our local veteran service officers expend the money. We reimburse them at a 75% rate so that there is that share of Carver, there is that share between the local communities and our state. But anything relating to homelessness, I have made a personal commitment to reimburse communities at 100% so that there is no excuse about helping homeless veterans and providing that sense of transition to those veterans who may be in need. That's a wonderful thing. That's, what, that's, that's so great. You know, you, 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 I get such a warm feeling when I know that there's somebody there ready to help me if I need it. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. truly what it's all about. And uh, we make it a point. We owe it to our veterans. And it is a program that is, again, very unique to Massachusetts. It, it goes back to the French and Indian Wars that far back. Uh, we, as a department, have been established longer than the VA. Um, today, we probably wouldn't be able to replicate this program just because of the logistics and the cost and, and the such, but we continue to enforce it and we continue to make it stronger by training our veteran service officers, by providing the support that they need, and by promoting the programs that they have so that it is not kept a best kept secret, but it is shared with the veterans and families who are in need of them. Does an officer in the town that's connected with your department, do they have to go to school, they have, what kind of training do they We receive? require them to attend training once a year. Outside of our training, the association, the Veteran Service Officers Association, places two trainings throughout the year. So they see each other about three times a year during our training. We test them, we train them, and we certify them so that every city and town, no matter what size, no matter how long the Veteran Service Officer has been there, has the same level of training and competency so that you can walk into Carver or Plimpton or uh, clear across North Adams or Boston or any other community and get the same quality of service and the same information so that you can walk in there for one unit of service and get asked and, and receive everything that you deserve and build a sense of rapport. Because the focus of the veterans' offices is not only to help veterans, but also give an opportunity to non-veterans to volunteer and help out and be involved in the sense of community. So if you haven't served and you want to serve veterans, stop into the Office of Veteran Services. Memorial Day is around the corner, decorating and placing American flags at every state, uh, at every cemetery and every American veteran's grave. It is part of our requirements. It is something that we also are able to provide. And so veteran service officers will be looking for assistance on Memorial Day leading up to that to place a flag. Uh, looking for assistance in placing events around Memorial Day and the such, and also we'll come across Veterans Day and the 4th of July and so many other activities that is not just for veterans by veterans, but is also for veterans by the members of the community. Wow. It's, uh, there you go. If you're sitting there and you want to help a veteran, there you go. There's your opportunity. We have an office right here in Carver in the town hall. His name is Ken Morrison. Go to him. Ask, what can I do to help? How do you think you owe it to the, our warriors that came back and those that didn't? 
and those that can't, are not so mobile anymore. Look what they laid out for us. Look what they did for us. Holy mackerel. We owe them something. And you can do that. And you know what? It, if you go up, my son on Memorial Day helps put the flags down in Bourne. And he tells me that I get such a kick. I, I get, he's not a veteran. Sure. I get such a warm feeling mm -hmm. at what I've done. I've done a good thing. Indeed. That's yeah, true. Indeed. It's a sense of accomplishment, and that's yeah, what we provide, um, that sense of opportunity. And many people, veterans and non-veterans, want to give back. Sometimes they just don't know how to start and which venue to go about it. Well, that's a good, thank yeah. you very much for that message. I, a couple of questions from a veteran yesterday sure. who grabbed me by the shoulder. He's a big guy, and he said, when you're talking to this guy, I said, this guy is the secretary of the DVS. All right. I want to know, and they, he's the head of a little veterans group here sure. where I live in South Meadow Village. Nice guy. I want to know what, if anything, the DVF would do for Gold Star families. And I said, that's a very interesting question. I don't know that they do anything. Sure. Do you? We do. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have an annuity, which is uh, $2,000 uh, for Gold Star families who have lost their loved ones. And Kenny, it goes above and beyond just uh, a payment every six months of $1,000. It's a sense of community, uh, a sense of involvement. Once a year, we work with an organization that's called Military Friends Foundation, and we host a Gold Star family tree at the State House. No matter when your loved one passed, no matter who you are relating to your loved one, you could come to the State House and decorate this 22-foot Christmas tree with an ornament of the picture of your loved one. And that, that tree stays at the State House in a very prominent place in Memorial Hall where thousands of people see it and read about the sacrifice of loved ones. Uh, the aspect of license plates for spouses and parents of Gold Star families is something that the state is committed to doing. Uh, again, it recognizes the service and sacrifice of the loved ones, but it, it again creates that awareness. And so many events throughout the year our local veteran service officers once again have a emphasis, as we requested from them, that every event that they do in the community to try to send an invitation, to try to open their doors to our Gold Star families, because their sacrifice is one that we cannot afford to forget, because they have not forgotten. And it is our responsibility to ensure that we remind them that we have not forgotten. Don't, don't you kind of feel that they're veterans as well as we who are in the service? that a mother who lost a son or a daughter is a veteran? We revere them a lot higher than that. They are a Gold Star family, a, a loved one who will never walk back into our communities. And so the reminder, the involvement, the phone calls, the aspect of engaging and placing them in a place of honor, it is what we do and what we owe those families. And so any need that they have, uh, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, whether it's just a sense of connection, that is what we are able to provide, and that is what so many of our partners in communities, whether it's a service organization such as the DAV, American VFW, and the such, uh, are, f are focused in placing that emphasis and teaching our younger generations what it means to be a Gold Star family, a title that these families wish they would never have had upon them. That's great. Thank you, Seth, for that. The second question he sure. had, he says there's a pamphlet or a booklet about veterans' benefits. Yes. And there is none here okay. in Carver, and he wants to know why. I'll make sure we send some. As All a matter right. of fact, as soon as I get back to the office, uh, there are many publications that are placed together. Uh, some are more inclusive than others. Uh, if you want to find all of our benefits and services, you could go to massvetsadvisor.org. I hope that link is now listed uh, uh, right now. Massvetsadvisor.org. It is a link all inclusive. All, all the bet veteran benefits and services available to both veterans and families, uh, which are placed together. But some of these booklets, whether it's the one from the Secretary of State or whether the one from the Attorney General or the one from our office, I'll make sure, Kenny, that you get a booklet um, that, more importantly, that the town of Carver gets some booklets so the veterans could come into Carver receive those uh, booklets and um, ensure that, again, our benefits, our services that we have earned as veterans and as veteran families do not stay as a best kept secret. You see what I'm doing for you? The secretary of the DVS is totally subservient to me now. <laughs> after just a few minutes. It's just after a few minutes. Okay, Dave, does that answer your questions? I hope it does. Thank you, Paul. They were quite valuable.
Um, elderly veterans. Um, I'm a little confused about home care. Sure. Um, let's take me for example. Okay. Let's, uh, God forbid I should get sick mm -hmm. and my daughter-in-law takes care of me. Is she entitled to any compensation yes. for that? So there are programs federally. The one that many veterans do not know and have not taken advantage of is called aid in attendance. And there's actually a program where the VA would compensate at a, a, a rate uh, for any veteran who's home care, homebound, and has a loved one caring for them, and also could transfer if you need care at a nursing home. It won't cover at 100% cost, but it could help subsidize the cost of uh, long-term care. And so that program is called Aid in Attendance, and it is administered federally. And so you could walk into an office, a veteran service officer, or any other uh, service organization, veteran service organization that has a claims officer, and you could sign up for aid and attendance. Can I, can I repeat, can, could you repeat that one yes. more time? Because I didn't know that. I'm totally ignorant of that sure. fact, that a veteran can go to a nursing home and the nursing home will be compensated in part. In part. By a by program called Aid and Attendance. Aid and Attendance. So the veteran must have a service-connected disability uh, first to be able to qualify for that program. But again, many requirements are uh, around that. And so what I recommend is sitting down with your local VSO in whatever city and town you're watching this program with today and ask about Aid and Attendance or just go to the VA website and look up Aid and Attendance. It's, the paperwork is fairly easy to fill out. Uh, but the, the real focus is to ensure that you complete it totally and mail it back to the Department of Veterans Affairs. See, that's, that's, that's the information I had no idea that, because uh, at my age mm -hmm. now, I don't have uh, the insurance mm -hmm. for long-term care if I need to go out sure. of my home to a facility. Now you just kind of relieved my, yeah. my mind. I am service connected. I, do a, I am a DAV. Okay. And... Uh, so that's, that's great news. Yeah, I think it's a good uh, opportunity for the DAV and many other of those organizations to share that with their membership, remind their membership no matter if, because many veterans do not know about that. And that's one of the many units of services available to veterans and families. Okay, I have, I have a, uh, very quickly, uh, I don't think there's anything you can do about this, but okay. I had a problem I had to go to Jamaica Plain. Mm -hmm. The problem was with my eyes. Okay. And I can drive in there fine. Sure. But I can't drive back because they're going to dilate and do okay. a lot of stuff. I couldn't find anybody. My age, my friends are gone or gone. Sure. And I couldn't find anybody to drive me in and drive me home. Sure. Uh, so the Jamaica Plain mm -hmm. kind of secretly arranged for yeah. a private carrier to pick me up sure. at my home, sure. brought me in. Brought me home. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't mm. believe it. But she said this is a one-time thing because yeah. you don't live far enough Correct, away. Right. So I asked to apply for Vets Choice. Yes. And I don't qualify for that either. Okay. Is there anything a veteran can do that lives down here and wants to go to Jamaica Plain? Anything he can do that won't take a you know, break his pocketbook? Sure. There is an organization which we work with locally here out of uh, Plymouth County, and that is Nathan the Hill. Nathan Hill. Uh, a tremendous organization, a tremendous nonprofit that one of their missions is to provide transportation to Plymouth County veterans to be able to travel uh, to and from uh, medical appointments. Is that subsidized by you? It is a earmark that they receive uh, from the legislature, but a lot of the monies that they raise are privately f uh, funded. And so if somebody wants to make an investment in veterans and somebody wants to uh, check the Nathan Hill Foundation, a lot of the, the monies that they work on are privately uh, raised, and so by donations. And uh, among, above and beyond that, they also have the Three Hearts Farm which is a location where I many veterans that. are able to uh, give a hand and they grow crops and they sell them in, in local food markets and the such. And again, it's uh, a good and honest organization that, that does so much on the focus of transportation for veterans. Also, the DAV has vans. Um, many are parked at hospitals. They're looking for volunteers each and every day for people to just drive those vans. So if you have a couple of hours that you could donate, if you have a day out of the week that you could donate or out of the month, 
sign up with the DAV, the Disabled American Veterans, and ask about their transportation program. If you go to Jamaica Plain, you go to Boston, you go to uh, many of the VA facilities, those vans are parked waiting for a driver yeah, seen to them. show up. So. Okay. There's another thing you can do. Uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Sure. Um, can we do this again sometime? I'd love to. Kenny, uh, at your request, uh, I'll be available. I want to leave your guests with a couple of opportunities. Uh, one is we're going to be recognizing our Vietnam veterans on Vietnam Veteran Recognition Day. It's a national uh, day of recognition, and we're doing ours on March 29th at the Worcester Vietnam Veterans Memorial Park in Green Hill Park in Worcester. Uh, we're going to be able to share that information as well here with a link listed, and that's going to start at 11 a.m., so you want to make sure you get there with ample time, uh, be able to, to show up to be recognized. You don't have to be a Vietnam veteran to show up but show up to give recognition to that generation that did not receive the welcome home, much as like our Korean War veterans. Yeah. The second opportunity is going to be in the week, the last week of September. The USS Thomas Hudner, a Medal of Honor recipient who crash landed his plane in Korea, became the Commissioner of the Department of Veteran Services for several governors. Uh, Thomas Hudner has a ship, a destroyer, being dedicated in his honor in September. And so about 9,000 tickets are going to be made available through the website USS Thomas Hudner DDG-116, which is the designation of his ship, DDG-116.org. And there, community members could receive up to five tickets to be able to tour the ship and be part of the historic, once-in-a-lifetime dedication of the USS Tom Hudner in Boston and the Back Bay there. Francisco Urena, Secretary of the DVS, impressive, impressive gentleman. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you people got as much out of this as I did. The man is phenomenal. I look forward to a political career. I hope I live long enough to see this man rise because he certainly deserves it. He's got my vote, whatever <laughs> happens. Thank you thank so very much. Thank you very much, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for yours. Uh, thanks. All right. We're about to leave now. I'm full of uh, information and uh, other things, people would say. Uh, but I will be back with another guest with another interesting topic. So don't you think I'm gone because I'm not. In the meantime, until then, keep a song in your heart. Goodbye, and God bless.